He profited, listen now, in the Jews' religion above many his equals in his own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers is what he said. He's saying it would have been hard to find a Jew more serious, supposedly, about God. You're not going to find one. Paul said that he out exceeded them all, following religious tradition and things in his life that he had been taught, that he'd been indoctrinated with. But there was a source now in his life, and it wasn't religion, it wasn't Judaism. It was Jesus Christ. Have you come face to face? Have you received Him for real in your life today? Young folks, it's a question you've got to ask yourself. Some of you older ones, same thing. How well do you know Jesus? Have you come face to face? Have you received Him in your heart? I don't want to plant doubts. You know if you are or you're not. I just want to make for certain that you know. Young people, there's a lot of individuals that are raised in Christian homes, raised around religion all their life, but have never really heeded the Holy Spirit. Knock, 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 knock. Have you asked him into your heart? Have you said, Jesus, I understand all of this, and the source of that gospel, I feel like I'm missing that's what we're talking about. The source of this gospel is Jesus, not religion. Paul emphasizes this in everything that he's saying. But look at this stop sign in verse 5. But, that's a little stop sign. Look at this. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace... Now what you're seeing is the differentiation between mere religion and the genuine article. See, he, he believed in God. The Jews believe in God. But they didn't believe in Jesus. Today we pray for the peace of Israel, the Jewish nation. Not about peace so the rockets won't come over the wall on them. Of course you don't want that. But the peace is the Prince of Peace. The truth about God and His Son already coming to earth them in the form of the Messiah. Pray for the peace. Pray for the Consoler, what that means. Pray for the Holy Spirit in Israel. Not an Orthodox Jew, but the Messianic Jew, as we discussed the other day in Bible study. You hear about an Orthodox Jew. This is a Jewish believer that believes in God, the law, but never received or even accept that Jesus was God incarnate. And then they come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ very much like Jew. you could call Apostle Paul an Orthodox Jew, turned Messianic Jew, turned Apostle, preacher of Christ, and the gospel, the true source of this gospel, emphasis put on Jesus Christ. We're talking about the source of this gospel being Jesus. He said that he, in verse 15, but when it pleased God, and he adds, and an attribute of God was the one that separated him from his mother's womb and called me by his grace. You know what grace is? Unmerited favor of God. Something that you cannot do. It's the love that your mom and your dad have for you, kids. That no matter what you do, they'll love you anyway. I don't care how ornery one child may be and how good the other one, although one may please you in ways of good things and kindness, your love for them is no greater than the love you have for the one that may be ornery. We see that in the story of the prodigal son. That was an image of the grace of God. And let me add this, God's grace is the same for you and I. God loves you. Paul was persecuting the church and God loved him. Loved him so much that he would stop him and say, I can use you. I can put you in a great direction, but I've got you to see and understand, and more importantly, receive the source of this gospel, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Otherwise, he would have lived his life as an Orthodox Jew with no true knowledge, and I'm talking received knowledge, of the true source of the gospel, and that's Jesus. We're talking about the source of this gospel today being Jesus, and we're discussing Paul's conversion, Paul's commission as the apostle that was, a, that was commissioned of Christ on the road to Damascus. And verse 16, let's continue to read in your Bibles in Galatians chapter 1. He goes on after saying that God was the one who separated his room and called him by grace. And he says in verse 16, to reveal his son to me. There's the source of the gospel. Jesus is the source. That I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. What did he mean by that? Paul's saying, I did not take God's calling and get my approval now of man. Mm, let me say something. Man is in the way of the Holy Spirit a little too much these days anyway. Paul was not called of God and then said, well, I better run up to Jerusalem and get my authority straight. No, 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 no. He did not do that, and I respectfully say that. Understand, there was nothing wrong with the calling of the other apostles. And I'm not putting Paul on a higher echelon than them. But Paul had enough in him to understand that what God gave him, just like with Israel, his callings are irrebukable and they are irrevocable. And when God says it, God means it. He sees the end from the beginning. And God put enough in Paul for Paul to know, I don't run to Jerusalem and now get authorization of them. I don't run over here to the temple and get taught of man. And teaching is good. God called some to be teachers. But Paul knew that he must go straight to what? The source of this gospel. And it was God himself. Are you beginning to see our personal relationship with God and the importance of it? Going to the source of the gospel. Now, it's good to come to church, I promise you, with the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to try to preach you the Word of God best I can. Okay? I promise you, with God's leading, I have no intention on leading people astray. I have the utmost respect and humility for this position. But, folks, there's things that I can't do that you got to take on your own self as responsibility. When you leave this church, take the Word of God in your hand. Take that unceasing prayer in your life. Take that salvation in your heart that's that great pearl. And you go home and you sit down or you do whatever or you travel or you pray. But you make God the center of your source in life. Because he is the source of your salvation. He's the source of your gospel. Cultivate that relationship with God and come back here in times of worship, times of Bible study, and make it even better. Paul is talking about the source of the gospel that he met on the road to Damascus. He's talking about the source of this gospel that points him toward the transformation always remembering that testimony of where God brought him from, Chuck, and where God's going to take him tomorrow. The endless possibilities when we focus on the source of our transformation and we rely upon the power and leading of the Holy Spirit, what God can do in our life, how far he's brought us, drive that stone of Ebenezer in the ground and say, God, this is a testimony of how far you brought me and a greater testimony of the double length you'll take me amen that is the source of your gospel church can't give you that your pastor can't give you that only the holy spirit through your one-on-one -on -one connection with god such as you will see paul in arabia three years is a long time he knew to go to the source they say if you have addiction go to the source What's the source? Yourself and admitting that you're the only one in control of this. Go to the source of the problem. I've seen people, I see people with great stories of recovery in Christ. 
I've seen people in stories of recovery just on their own in programs, and that's great. But there's no lasting source of recovery like the Holy Spirit indwelling in one's life. That's right. But that individual had to go to the source of the problem, which was self. And then they had to give it over to God and have a new source take over. Amen. That is what Paul did. Paul was not a drug addict or an alcoholic or any other kind of alcoholic. He was a religious alcoholic. He was a moralist. He was a religious man that told others to do like him instead of like the law said, to love your neighbor not only as yourself, but now love your neighbor like Christ loves you. That fulfilled the law, New Testament, transcending back to old to complete and fulfill what God originally said and putting it in an envelope of understanding that the source of love and power and change and transformation is what happened in Paul's life. The source of the gospel is what we're talking about. Somebody in here may be saying, man, what in the world is he talking about? He's all hot and bothered today. We're talking about the source of this gospel. See, that's why i got to go buy an outline or something. You guys, my wife, I'm too scatterbrained. I'll be all over the road. i got to have something to keep me on a path Let's look at this, because I'm nearly done. I, I promise you I am. Look at this now. What did he do in verse 16 to reveal his son in me? Not just to me, but in me. That I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Look at this. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. So... He was following the leading of the Lord the whole time he was. He declares that Jesus was the source of the gospel, the one that transformed him, we could say. Something miraculous happened to Paul. 